Kate Greenaway was born in London in 1846. She was born into a creative household as her father, John Greenaway, worked as a wood engraver and provided illustrations to various magazines. She also had two aunts who were a bookbinder and a wood engraver. Kate Greenaway began taking art classes at the age of 12 and won her first award soon after. She began her adult career by illustrating for magazines and designing Valentine and Christmas cards. She was employed by Marcus Ward and Company for six years before she met Edmund Evans. Evans was vital to Greenaway's career as he was able to print her illustrations in color. Greenaway illustrated her own books as well as others. She was commissioned by Robert Browning to illustrate his poem, The Pied Piper of Hamelin. In 1882, Greenaway befriended a famous art critic by the name of John Ruskin. They remained friends until his death in 1900. In 1877, Kate Greenaway was made a member of the Royal Institute of Painter and Watercolors. The Victorian era in England was marked by Queen Victoria's reign from 1837 to 1901. The year 1848 brought with it the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution buried large amounts of factories across the nation of Britain. Children were made to work in these factories as they could maneuver smaller spaces than full-grown adults. Poets like Elizabeth Browning wrote poems in response to the deplorable and dangerous working conditions. These writings were used to draw attention to the problem, while Kate Greenaway's illustrations drew attention away from it. Her illustrations showed children engaging in play. They were the depiction of innocence. Kate Greenaway can be connected to three significant art movements of the Victorian age. The first, Romanticism, which lasted from the 1790s through the 1880s. The Aesthetic or Arts and Crafts movement, which lasted from the 1880s through the 19-teens, and the Queen Anne Revival movement, which lasted from the 1870s through the 19-teens as well. Greenaway came of age during the period of Romanticism, which influenced the style she developed, particularly her attention to natural elements. Greenaway was influenced heavily by William Morris, the patriarch of the aesthetic or arts and crafts movement, and his return to a medieval source of inspiration. Greenaway also worked with Norman Shaw, who was the most famous Queen Anne architect of his day, and she included the Queen Anne style in her homes of the works that she did. During the Victorian period, holiday cards rose to prominence. Cards for Christmas and Valentine's Day became very popular. If we look at examples from Kate Greenaway, who made her living making these types of cards, we can see all the aspects of typical romanticism. The idolization of childhood and innocence, the reverence for women, the adoration of nature and beauty, and the sentimentalism of a pre-industrial time can all be seen in Greenaway's cards. John Ruskin was a prominent art critic at the time Kate Greenaway was active. He enjoyed the way her illustrations depicted children engaging in children's activities free of responsibilities and work. Quote, there are no railroads in it to carry the children away, no tunnel or pit mouths to swallow them up, no vestige of science, civilization, economic arrangements, or commercial enterprise. End quote. John Ruskin, Fairyland, Mrs. Allingham, and Kate Greenaway, a Slade lecture at Oxford University, 1884. While Ruskin might have critiqued her art as lacking form and detail, her attention to detail in architecture, furniture, and gardens is as astounding as it was influential at the time. Greenaway embraced the Queen Anne and arts and craft styles in her scenery and used it to accentuate the softness of the ladies and children within them. 
according to Mark Gerard in Sweetness and Light, The Queen Anne Movement, the picture books of Walter Crane, Kate Greenaway, and Randolph Caldecott were secret persuaders more convincing than any prose of the need for artistic education, especially in the nursery. Greenaway worked with Norman Shaw, the preeminent Queen Anne Revival architect, to design her home in Hampstead. These photographs, taken by her biographer, M. H. Spielman, show the Queen Anne design of her home and studio and the incorporate of the aesthetic or arts and crafts style. Her home and workspace were mirrored in the art that she created, or was it the other way around? Under the Window was Kate Greenaway's first children's storybook published in 1881. Under the Window is a collection of verses and nursery rhymes. All the illustrations depict children playing or engaging in some sort of action they find pleasurable. The colors are bright and the children's faces can easily be seen responding to the situation they are in. Greenaway even took care to illustrate the white space around the text. She did not waste any negative space that could be better used as a vehicle for her art. The Mother Goose characters and stories originated in the mid-1600s. Since then, there have been countless renditions of the timeless tales in the years since their conception. In 1881, Kate Greenaway illustrated an edition of Mother Goose. The collection featured such rhymes as Mary Mary, Quite Contrary, Little Jack Horner, and Little Bo Peep. Greenaway's art style and illustrations was nostalgic for many Victorian readers as they depicted an idyllic life in the rural countryside. The influence of British culture around the world cannot be understated. Even in the United States, the intellectual and cultural elite were taken in by the literature, art, and architecture of Kate Greenaway's homeland. Two prominent champions of Greenaway's work in the United States were Anne Carol Moore and Bertha Mahoney. Moore was the legendary first children's librarian of the Pratt Institute and then of the New York Public Library who published articles in the Bookman, Herald Tribune, and the Horn Book. Mahoney founded a notable children's bookstore in Boston and co-founded the Horn Book in 1924. According to Anne Carol Moore in A Century of Kate Greenaway, published in 1946, Greenaway and William Blake held a golden key to the kingdom of childhood and record what is seen and felt with a truth and beauty that defy time and space. The Chartered Institute of Library and Information Professionals, or CILIP, Kate Greenaway Medal, was established in 1955 and is awarded to the most distinguished work and illustration of children's books in the UK. It is comparable to the Caldecott Medal. It is given annually by the British Library Association. Past winners include Anthony Brown, Raymond Briggs, and Quentin Blake. Kate Greenaway's books were not only for children, they were also about children. Childhood became a sort of Eden in the world of Kate Greenaway. Therefore, growing up came to mean a loss of innocence. Within this new context, fantasy and escapism, such as Peter Pan, The Hobbit, and The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, all flourished. She sought to capture the innocence and naivete of childhood. Children are drawn to these titles because they portray young protagonists that live in gentle domesticity but yearn for the adventure beyond their front door. Kate Greenaway helped to pave this road by illustrating. Her drawings showed that children were more than small laborers. She furthered the cause of the Victorian age by declaring through her art that children deserve to have a carefree childhood outside of the realm of adult problems. <laughs>